So last time we looked at Olympus EP3, and then we looked at the EPL3. This time we're looking at the EPM1. So what should you buy this camera for? Let's take a look. It's a trusty 12 megapixel sensor which brings you image quality in line with the other cameras in the pen range. Well, the way Olympus has named everything, the EP3 and the EPL3, the pen light, and the EPM1, the mini, it seems like it has been geared up so that the physical attributes and features are what set these cameras apart. So Olympus released this along with the EPL3 quite recently, and they do look kind of similar. I mean, when we look in the front and also back, but there are minor differences. So anyway, this camera has got 12 megapixels. Basically, it's just the same as the other Olympus pens. Same performance, same image quality. Now this EPM1 comes with a kill lens, but I, I left that because it's uh, rubbish. And I took this 45mm 1.8, which is great. Of course, we don't want to view rubbish, do we? So. Well, he's patient, isn't he? You find that the image quality is practically the same as the other pen cameras, the current pen cameras. Because actually, inside, the sensor is the same. So what is different? I mean, after all, this is the EPM1, which... No, is that right? Yeah, EPM1. They've got so many different names now, it's confusing. EP, EPL, EPL3, EPM1. So this is the EPM1, which is the micro, the micro of the range, which means it's the smallest. And it is, it's quite a bit smaller, obviously, than the EP3. And when you compare it to the light, it's slimmer because it doesn't have that tilty, swivelly screen. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I want to take a picture of that, but that's just, Hilarious. It has face detection, which I find to be incredibly useful, unless your subject doesn't have a face. Now when I say it's slimmer and it's different to the EPL3, well it is kind of a little bit different, but not much. It doesn't have a tilty swivelly screen, but it still has a 16x9 screen here, which I've mentioned before I don't like, because this is a 4x3 format and you're just having loads of black space here. Of course you can change it to 16x9, but that's not the original format, so what's the point? It's not that it's a bad screen, it just feels like there's a big waste of space on the LCD. Unless you shoot 16x9 of course. And if you look on the back, there's actually less buttons than the EPL3 and well, obviously EP3. It's quite minimalistic. And then on the top, there's no mode dial. So what you have to do to actually change between the different modes, you have to go to menu, and you've got it here. Art, I auto, scene, movie, and of course the PASM. I suppose some people might not like lack of a modal, but well, this is kind of appealing to a certain market. I mean, perhaps trying to attract the, the compact market. The lack of buttons doesn't work for those who like to mess about with the settings or modes a lot. The body is actually very similar to EPL3. It doesn't have the pop-up flash now you have to put on as an additional accessory. And it's got the same sleek metallic finish as the EPL3. Ah, oh, that's all right, isn't it? Look at that stereo mic as well. Good for video recording. Especially as there's no mic input. The focus speed is really quite decent on a part of the EPL3. It has all that true pick 6 processor stuff and other tweak things going on to make the focus really quite snappy. I gotta love this area of Hong Kong. It's just total randomness. But to be honest, it's inoffensive. It has a certain appeal and it takes good photos like the rest of the range. The array of art filters is quite basic, but decent. Are these ones you burn for dead people? If you can't afford a real thing, just get a paper one. Spendy. There must be a PC. A Windows PC notebook. Look at that. Definitely nothing Apple will come up with. Oh, they have an iPad. Look at that. 
the wine pad. Oh, dirty. What is this? That's a good camera. I have the same problems as I do with the EPL3. It's a little bit slippery when you're holding it. But generally, in terms of its performance as a camera, there's nothing to complain about. The EPM1 is a decent camera, though it isn't drastically different to the EPL3, which is why it frankly feels like we're covering the same ground. The two cameras even look vaguely similar. But there's a reason for a light and even lighter. This is the camera to convert those compact users. It's a camera for making the change from compact to something with more flexibility, a lot smoother. No confusion of which mode to go for no overdose of buttons. Consequently, it does suffer sometimes in usability because of the button sacrifice. This is the most stripped down of the pen range. But if you don't mind that, then this is an all right pen to shoot with. So anyway, we're back in the studio with the EPM1 right here, and we're going to take some more shots for our calendar. Um, we're doing the third of our calendar shots, which is incredibly mm. funny for Lambie. Oh, it's just your face, your... Oh, great, uh... thank you. So, we're doing... <gasps> so anyway, the third shot, which is um, our digital rev DIY disasters. So here they are. All of them. All of our splendid work, if you could call it splendid. If splendid is another word for shit. So here we are. Hey, where's your cool look? I have one. Hey, that's true, you don't have one, sorry. Um... So there we go, on to the next shot. So, this next calendar photo is the tripod test. Now, we have to recreate this somehow, um, and you know the Gitso tripod is actually broken, so we'll just have to make do. Um, okay, there we go. 